Sometimes it's hard to organize and make sense out of a small closet, especially when it's for a teenager. And if you're like me and you're a renter, you can't go in and change the structure of the closet, so you have to do some creative problem solving. So here's some variations on my own daughter's closet using just organizational products. I was a closet designer at the container store for seven years before I started my own organizing business. And honestly, it was my favorite part of the job. I love designing closets and garages and pantries and craft spaces. But the truth is you can't have a good design for any space unless you've gone through the organizing process first. And I've got a video that I've done on the organizing process that I will link in the description below. But I really encourage you to do that first because that is going to guide all of your design decisions for the closet. One of the most important steps in any good closet design, no matter how big the closet is, is knowing your categories. You can't create a closet that's gonna do what you need it to do unless you know your categories and how big they are. So here's a list of nine typical categories that would be in most teens' closets. Hanging clothes, long and short. Folded clothes, which would be sweaters, sweatshirts, underwear, bras, socks, uh, pajamas, swimwear, workout clothes. Winter wear, coats, hats, gloves, and scarves. Shoes and boots. Accessories like belts, purses, wallets, jewelry, scarves, athletic wear, memorabilia like collectibles, stuffed animals, saved schoolwork. Linens would be just the sheets, pillows, and blankets for that room. And then a place for dirty clothes, a hamper or a basket. I can almost guarantee you that all nine of those categories are not going to fit in a small reach-in closet. So you get to choose which things might potentially live in other places. So like the bedroom, if you have a dresser or some shelves, or maybe in the bathroom, or just another place in the house, perhaps another room or a closet. But be sure that you don't split up a category. It's really important to house it all together because invariably we forget about the alternate or second location and we think we don't have it and we go buy more. So wherever you decide to put a category, make sure that it stays intact. So I'm gonna walk back through those nine closet categories and determine which ones we could realistically accommodate in our own closet. So number one, hanging clothes. My daughter has a fair amount of hanging clothes and surprisingly a large amount of long hang. And so I think that's gonna be our largest category. Folded clothes, she does love to wear sweaters and sweatshirts, but they are bulky and they take up a lot of space. So I'm gonna opt to house those in a dresser in the bedroom. Uh, winter wear, I've got coats, hats, gloves, and scarves in another place in the house, so I don't have to worry about that. Shoes and boots, I'd say she has an average number of those, but that's still probably the second largest category. Accessories, belts, purses, wallets, uh, jewelry, scarves, she has hardly any of that, so that is not gonna be a problem to tuck in to the closet or maybe even to the bedroom. Athletic gear, she does not have a lot of athletic gear, so that's not something I have to put in the closet. Memorabilia actually is a big deal for her. She has a lot of collectibles and stuffed animals, and saved schoolwork, so that's our third largest category. Linens, I don't have to worry about sheets and blankets and pillows for the bed because I have those in another place, but she does have a sleeping bag that I can't fit anywhere else, and she has a couple of throws that she likes to keep close by, so I'm gonna try to make that work in the closet. And then lastly is just a place for dirty clothes. So if I can swing it, I'm gonna to try to get a dirty clothes hamper in the closet. If not, it can live in the bedroom and that'll still be okay. So I came up with a list of four categories that I want to house in this closet. I've got hanging clothes, shoes and boots, memorabilia, and linens. And I guess five if you count the dirty clothes hamper. So the question is, what is the best design or layout to fit those categories in this specific closet. So let's take a look at my daughter's closet. It has been several years since this closet was organized and it really does need some love. Plus my daughter's off at college now, 
So these clothes were left either because they're just out of season or mostly because she just doesn't care about them as much. If all of her clothes and shoes were here, the closet would be much more crowded, which means we definitely need to do some purging. I would also say that the reason that she has so much long hang is that she does cosplay and collects vintage clothing. So that's a whole separate category for us. We've located all the cosplay accessories and costumes that could be folded in an underbed storage system, but it still leaves the things that have to be hung for the closet, and most of those are long. So you probably won't need as much long hang as we do. So this is a basic reach-in closet with one rod and a shelf. You know, the closet's just deep enough to accommodate the clothes. Uh, most older homes and a lot of current commercial construction use this design, so you see it in a lot of apartments. And they usually place the rod at about 64 inches, which is considered the ideal height for long hang. And I guess the idea is that the rod at that height would accommodate any length of clothing, which makes sense, except that it leaves a lot of wasted space under the short hang. And plus, even if you add a closet doubler like we did here, there's just not enough space to fully hang a shirt or a jacket on the bottom row. And in our case, we're renting a 1920s home and our rod was hung at 62 inches, so we have even less space on the bottom. And you can see we've made it work by hanging double folded pants and short skirts, but it's definitely not ideal. Typically, each short hang section should be around 36 to 40 inches, so the rod would need to be hung at around 76 inches for you to have adequate length on the bottom. But with the rod at 76 inches, you would literally double your hanging space. Now, obviously, if you could change the structure of the closet, that would be the best way to optimize and maximize the space. But when you're in a rental, you can't always do that. I am gonna be using this closet in an upcoming video where I talk about if you could change the closet structure, what would be the best design to use, and then how to incorporate things like drawers and over the door racks. So stay tuned for that, and when it's done, I will link it in the description below. Here's the closet setup that optimizes my daughter's needs the most, which is basically what it was with some minor improvements because we needed so much hanging that pretty much took up all the internal space of the closet. That meant that the shoes, our next biggest category, would either have to go on the floor, the shelf, or on the door. And in this case, and honestly most cases, the floor is just not a great option because the clothes are hanging down so far it just becomes a jumbled mess as you saw in the before picture. The shelf is a possibility but in order to accommodate all of the shoes, you would need to go pretty high and they would have to stack, which means either shoe boxes with lids like this, or really a better option is drop front shoe boxes. But considering this is for a teen, I think the easier access is the door. Open pockets just take less effort and will probably be a more successful system for teens. Of course, not every type of shoe will fit in the pockets uh, and certainly not boots. You know, but awkward shaped and seldom used shoes can go up on the shelf in boxes. And boots can tuck under the long hang pretty well, but be sure to use boot shapers because the only way you can keep that tidy is if the boots are standing straight up. And without the boot shapers, they just flop over and they get lost under the clothes and it's a big mess. Plus, boot shapers are good for your boots. The other nice thing about using the door for shoes is that it leaves most of the shelf for our memorabilia and linens, which, you know, don't need to be accessed very often. And lastly, I put in just a couple of command hooks for belts because she only has a couple, and so that was really easy to tuck away. So to make this a well-functioning space, I only had to purchase the closet doubler, shoe pockets, uh, the two big bins for the memorabilia, two smaller boxes for the memorabilia, eight shoe boxes and see two sets of boot shapers the shelf and some command hooks i spent less than a hundred dollars and if i move i can take it all with me so let's look at some variations if you didn't need as much long hang as we did you have a lot more options 
With less long hang, you can expand your short hang, which means you may not even need the bottom row of hanging at all. And if that space is opened up, you could use shelves or stacking bins for folded clothes or purses or other accessories, and you'd still have the top shelf for something else. I had these plastic stacking bins somewhere else in the house, so I just brought them in to show you what it could look like. But I would definitely do white, uh, not only because it looks nice because everything else is white, but also things are a lot easier to see against the white. And at the bottom of the closet, that's a user-friendly thing to do. The other thing that's actually great about open bins for teens is that if your teen is a messy teen, honestly, just having a place where they could throw something and not have to fold it is a really big asset. So stacking bins like this, even though they're a little bit awkward because they're low down in the closet, it's just a really path of least resistance way to get your teen to at least get the things where they belong. Another option would be to move the shoes from the door to below the hanging by using either shelves or open stacking bins or drop front shoe boxes. And then the upper shelf could be your accessories like your purses or uh, other smaller accessories that could fit in stackable boxes, kind of like the ones we used in the memorabilia. And by opening up the door, you then can use things like um, just an over the door hook for a robe or, or some long stuff. Or what I really love is the Alpha from the container store over the door rack, because you can accessorize that so many different ways. It can have just baskets, or you can do hooks, um, but it's really great storage. Another great option for any size closet is hanging pockets. And of course, you've seen them, they come in different widths and different number of compartments. And they're great for storing all kinds of things, shoes, folded clothes, accessories, but just make sure that whatever you're going to gain in the closet organizationally is going to be worth the loss of the hanging space. So what does all this have to do with teenagers? It's really just a stereotype that teens are messy. There are many teenagers, just like adults, who really appreciate the order that a good system brings and they're happy to keep their spaces tidy. And a good system is easy to use. It's easy to access, you can see everything and everything has a place. And so just make it the path of least resistance for your team. Make it so obvious and easy to put things away that it's just no big deal. And I really encourage you to make it a collaborative process. I guarantee you that if your teen has options about how things are set up, they do have preferences. And if they have a vested interest in setting up the system, they're much more likely to maintain it. An empty closet is a blank canvas, so have fun creating. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to stay tuned for that future video using the same closet where I talk about designing with a new closet system. If you'd like more design-oriented videos, you can check out this playlist and click the subscribe button so that you can get videos on the organizing process and products. Thanks again. And I'll see you on the next one.